Good morning. Hi, Allison. How are you today? I'm all right. I'm tired. Very, very tired. And I feel like my allergies are just, they're just doing things. But I'm here and I have a large mug of coffee today. Loaded most likely need to eat coffee is what my mug says. Um, and that's how I'm feeling today. And normally I drink out of like smaller mugs, but this is a big one because I was, I was feeling it, feeling it today. Yeah. I've got a, a decent size mug today, Ooh, but wait, oh. can, I, can I see more of that? That looks pretty. Oh, that's cute. I look in the wrong direction. Yeah. That's I love so basely. Cute. Yes. Mine, so. mine I got in a, um, in a family white elephant gift exchange and we've been doing it for a few years. And it's funny because everyone leaves with something like that they really want and like, it seems like, I mean, like I really want and like this mug, you know? Um, exactly. And so it's one of those things where it's like everyone brings like a joke gift, but everyone seems like mostly happy with what they leave with. <laughs> unlike, That's awesome. Unlike the gift um, exchange we've sometimes had at the library where people do get really bizarre things and they're like, well. I gave one year for the white elephant we did, I, I brought a magic eight ball, which sounds okay, except when you flipped it upside down, like the thing was in there, but it would never float to the top. So you, you never got, you never found out what, what, what your That's prediction a, was. a pretty disappointing <laughs> gift. Um, I'm wanting to make sure, are we on our right link here on Facebook? Um, I hope so. I hope people are right. out there watching. I am getting messages that they're, that we're not. So let's oh, make sure. Um, maybe, maybe just check with Mary and see if we are good to go. Oh, okay. I think we're good. I think we've got okay. people here. Okay. Okay. There's one. Okay. okay. All right. That's good. Hey, Liz, thank you for, uh, for letting us know that you're here because we're still a little uncertain sometimes with what we're doing, what we're doing. And just so you know, the software changed just a little bit because we finally got the upgraded version. So we version, we get to try new things. We get to experiment. We might even get like a logo, um, but we have to learn how to do all of that. Um, she says when she clicked on the link on the sidebar on Facebook, it took her to last week. So it's still something that's something to think about. We're broadcasting in the right spot, but maybe we have a link. Okay. And there's Tara. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you, Liz. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. And this morning we had a meeting that went kind of long. So we were like, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My computer would not connect. So it's it's been yeah. a morning already. Yeah. Yeah. The big cup of coffee is necessary this morning. And actually my coffee this morning is, I hate to call it a recipe of, because it's not really, but it's something of my own design where I just, I make a coffee and then I put a bunch of milk in it. And then I put um, like a big spoonful of hot chocolate mix. And then I put coffee in it and then I mix it all up together. So it's like a homemade mocha thing. So um, that's what I'm having. Just to- Yeah, I just do that sometimes. Yeah. I just so, add the hot chocolate to my coffee. Yes, and it's like the best of all worlds because hot chocolate, the only thing it's missing is coffee. Yeah, right. and you know, everything could be better with coffee. Exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> so I mentioned that in the recipe because we were gonna talk about cookbooks today. Yes, cookbooks. <laughs> I, I can't believe that I now, like on my library card, have checked out like, I don't know, 12 cookbooks because I don't cook. I don't cook at all. I checked them out just for today, just for you, Allison, so we could talk about cookbooks. But Thank it's, you. if if I had checked, you know, if I had like, if, if library cards work the way credit cards do, yes, I was gonna I say that. Off, someone would have said, this is a right. suspicious <laughs> checkout. Are you sure you have the right person? Right. Because <laughs> you think that this, this has never happened before. <laughs> if we weren't so strict, libraries weren't so strict about privacy and very particular about different types of privacy and we had that type of stuff on cards yeah it would actually be like oh someone stole his card <laughs> right yeah yeah um i cookbooks for mom yes yes as a matter of fact mom might get the, the chance to look at these cookbooks before i take them back because would you be tagged for things that you would like to try maybe <laughs> 
<laughs> so yes, um, this is the cookbook I got for me. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> you suck at cooking because that's me. Um, and it just, it, it, it has very basic recipes and it starts out um, just with, you know, how to do it. Do you know, we have like three different books on how to cook eggs because I guess everyone's got to start somewhere. <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> how to cook an egg. That's great. I'm glad, that we have those. I'm glad that we have those, especially because like you said, everybody has to start somewhere and it can feel really overwhelming when you look at, Ooh, dips and snacks. Like this, this is a perfectly acceptable thing to eat. Just snacks, just snacks. Like <laughs> someone else has done the work. All you gotta do is open the package. Right? But yeah. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. I'm very proud of you for checking out one intentionally for yourself. Please <laughs> on what you've learned from that book. I hope that next. I won't hold you to it, it's fine. But I hope that our next Lattes with Librarians, perhaps in your hand, you will have something you learn to cook from there, like toast. Oh, is that a challenge? <laughs> a challenge for you to come with, with a non-burned piece of toast? I don't know. Should the, the, I'm, the, gonna, the, I'm not sure I could do a whole lot more. Actually, the one thing I, I, I will cook is breakfast. Um, my, my nephews love my my French toast, and they call it Tante Maria's world famous French toast. But um, it's not world famous. <laughs> they are going to have it. <laughs> but yeah, like That's really sweet. Do. So Liz mentioned buffalo chicken dip. That is something that I love making, and it's one of those things that I will make it for like a group of friends. And in part, I have to do that because if I don't, I just eat the whole thing, and then I get you know. Very sad um, afterwards, but um, oh, Leah's coming back. Um, but I do love making the dip and I like making it like extra spicy and it's just so, so good. And it smells so good. I don't know. It's one of those things that just has like a feel to it when it's cooking. I just really like it. Looks like a, friend. a man, a can, a plan, 50 great guy meals even you can make. That, that's probably like my level of cooking. Well, I think that's a good link. That sounds good. We do have we do have other books like that too, I think, that are like if this is where how you see yourself, then this is the kind of meal that you can make. And we also have books like this one, um, How to Feed Yourself. Mm -hmm. It's um when you don't know what you're doing. This is also kind of my level. This is this is geared towards like college students who are like out on their own for their first time or like, you know, young people who are out on their own. Yeah. And they have to start like cooking and making stuff and eating healthy and not just ordering pizza every night. So it's got, yeah. you know, fun, fun dishes that they can make. Well, and, um, Tiki, yeah. has told you bluff. Tiki says that you cook excellent brisket. Well, Matthew says you cook excellent brisket. So someone's calling your bluff about cooking. I do make a pretty darn good brisket. I, I, I will admit that. I will. I will. Well, you know, maybe you maybe you cook really well and you just never want to cook for anyone else. So you claim you don't. You keep it all to yourself. I hate cooking. I make such a mess in the kitchen and there's such a mess to clean up. And it just. Well, yeah, I don't have a dishwasher. I, I, I will take I will take that compliment. My brisket is pretty good. And it's super easy. Wow. If it's ours, it's super easy. If we weren't having to be socially distant, I would recommend you bring that. I was actually thinking, this is off topic, but how delightful would it be if when we can be together again, what if we did an in-person lattes with librarians on the third floor of the library and we had real coffee and anyone who's on here who could make it could come. When, when, I know it's not going to be anytime soon, but when, wouldn't that be fun? That would be Awesome. I love that idea. And then maybe we like can bring in some stuff that we've talked about or I don't know. It would just be really cool. Yes. I love that idea. When we don't have to be so we'll far apart. We'll pencil that in on question mark of question mark. <laughs> yeah, so. You know what? Some of these recipes, they look like something I could probably even do if I had um, willpower and, you know, the drive. See, this is the thing that drives me crazy about cookbooks and cooking shows. People love these. 
I can't buy enough cookbooks. I'm constantly, constantly buying new cookbooks for the library. And every yeah. time I'm like, mm, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll skip this one. I check and people have it on hold already. Mm -hmm. So I have to have it. Yes. But, but I, Allison, you know, I buy thousands of cookbooks we get, every year. We get so many cookbooks and I love looking through them. I check them out. I know... I think there's other people like me, but I don't think, I mean, people have different ways. I check cookbooks out all the time and I browse, through, I browse through them and I read them. Like I read recipes. I read them sometimes even cover to cover without even making anything. Cause I just like, it's like reading about the stuff and seeing how you do it. And the more familiar you become with recipes, sometimes you can look at the list of ingredients and just be, I know exactly how to make this based on what the ingredients are. And I like looking at the pictures and stuff. So I will say some of those cookbooks, are you buy? I'm a frequent user of that collection. I take them home. Well, I'm I'm glad that, that people are checking them out. The yeah. problem I have with cookbooks, yes, they do not provide me with the motivation to make what is in there. They do not provide me with the ingredients to make what is in there. And no. you know how I feel about the grocery store. I hate. I do. The grocery store. Not one hundred percent appropriate I, to move into rant about that. Yeah, I, I, I will not subject our viewers to the to my rant because, as you know, I can talk for like forty minutes about why I hate the grocery store. So I will just leave it at that. I hate the grocery yes. store. So the the ingredients do not magically appear, and the motivation to make what's in the the, the book does not magically appear. Yeah, but the hunger does, and the hunger for this exact thing does so it's like i'm then hangry for something yeah. that i can't have. and then there's like an extra level of rage you then you're like extra ragey because you can't have it and you just want that specific thing and you can't have it and then that just feeds the anger and then nothing will satisfy you after that yeah that makes sense i don't know why leah keeps popping off here she'll come back um like i said we're working with a new version of our software which it's fine and should be better and good, but we're just getting there. Um, yeah, it would be awesome if cookbooks came with everything that you needed. Yes. That would be ideal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like checking them out, like I said, to browse through start to finish, to get new ideas. And then sometimes they're just like really fun or funny to look at, like the one that um, I think we have cake my day yes and those are so intimidating because that's almost just like art it's not even really cooking anymore it's like i, I have but the thing i love about these because she's got this one this this author um karen tack and alan richardson they they've got like three or four cookbooks um they show you step by step how to recreate it though so they show you like what cake pan use and um but Look at that. Oh it's my cake. God. It looks like an example. Holy cow. How fun is that? Right? Yeah. But it just, and I had to bring this one. This is them too. This is cupcakes. Well, you so had to. Look like, so of course, of course, I had to grab that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. They have another cupcake one that it had sheep on the cover, and the cover was actually like maybe a little bit cuter, but I was like, mm -mm. got to mm -hmm. pick up the one with the rubber ducks. So, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And you, when we were talking about these cookbooks, you were talking about how many we had and how many shelves and shelves and rows and rows. And sometimes when people ask you, you know, like I'm looking for a cookbook and you're like, I can direct you to that, but you're going to probably want to be more specific because we have 48 shelves of cookbooks and like cooking type stuff, mm -hmm. food stuff. But right now, because everything has been returned, like lots of things have been returned to the library and people aren't checking them out. The mm -hmm. shelves are jam packed. They could easily be stretched out like another eight or so shelves. But right now we have 48 completely jam packed full shelves of cookbooks. And it's like it's, every every type of thing is represented on those cookbook shelves. We have a lot of just like global cooking, you know, different. I think I very one of the more recent ones I sent out was like a really nice Korean cookbook. I remember doing that one. Um, I grabbed um, a Japanese cooking cookbook because mm -hmm. every once in a while, oh, I, 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 I crave some, some Japanese food. Mm -hmm. There are some certain things that I love and this cookbook has it's got a lot of a lot of the Japanese cookbooks have like fusion type recipes where they Americanize it a little bit more than others. 
this one doesn't. It's really, um, really Japanese home style cooking. Yeah, and, like, that's awesome. Um, this this dish, tonkatsu, is like my favorite. Was my favorite thing over wow. there. It's really just like this fried pork dish, but the sauce that you put on it is phenomenal. And it just so this one, this rest, this this book, um, everyday harumi, simple Japanese food for family and friends. It's really. Japanese style Japanese. That's good to know. You're right. A lot of things are fusion because in part, because I think sometimes it's hard to find ingredients. So they sort of, you know, modify things for your typical American grocery store, but also, you know, it's great to be able to, if you really want to make a Japanese meal, you don't want one of those fusion cookbooks. Right. Right. And Liz wanted to know who gets to shelf read all those cookbooks. Unfortunately, the shelvers do it. And by the time they're done, they're like cross-eyed. I was in there. I was in there looking for for some cookbooks, and I found a couple things that were misshelved. <laughs> I wasn't got to hear my rants about that. Very that dramatically happened. misshelved. The number was it was it was understandable how the number was misshelved, but the subject was just very unrelated. <laughs> Book about the flu in the middle of the cookbooks that doesn't go. <laughs> but they just flip flopped two numbers when they read the call number, so. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of call numbers, cookbooks, um, they can get, the numbers can get pretty long and that's because um, of the specificity of, of what the cookbook is about. So we have lots of cookbooks that are about cooking for diets that exclude certain foods mm -hmm. because, you know, so many people don't have, um, they don't eat gluten, they don't eat dairy or they don't eat sugar. Um, and so those numbers to be specific, so because we have so many, and a lot of libraries do, you know, it's a very popular thing. So many cookbooks are printed. Um, but because of that, you want to be able to be specific about where you're looking. You don't want to have to look over nine shelves of books and inner filed in there are books about gluten-free cooking. You want to be able to find the ones that are about gluten-free cooking all sitting next to each other. So sometimes the numbers do get very, very long. And another interesting fact about that is it was just in the past couple of years, it's been since I've been at Fairfield County that um, the Dewey, group who makes Dewey numbers, um, added a number for vegan cooking, which was just so irritating because the vegetarian number had vegetarian cooking and vegan cooking. But if you're vegan, you don't want to look at the vegetarian books. So I had made up a number and put all the vegan books together because that was just, it just had, it had to be done. And so then finally the Dewey group made a number and it was not, they added a different number than the number that I added. So ours are technically incorrect, but I feel like as long as they're together, that can be a project that can just change some afternoon and it will as long as they're together, that's what's important. But it just that, didn't all kind of absolutely that is what's important. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Kelsey wants to know if we have books about spices. Yes. Yes, we do. We have a couple different books that, that talk about spices and like like you said, their labor profile and what they're used for. So we, we do have a couple of those. Looks like uh, Tara found you one. So thanks, Tara. <laughs> um, cooking with COVID was a suggestion. We have not gotten a gotten a cooking with COVID book yet. <laughs> I don't put it past. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, sometimes there's books about foods that have a slightly different number. Six forty one point five is really, and then all the other digits is really about like recipes and cooking. But then in that same general area, six forty one point three, and some other areas in there um, are books about food. And my guess is that that's probably where the spices. The spices books are probably not 641.5. They're probably somewhere else in the 640s. Um, like we have books about the history of certain foods and things like that, but don't actually include recipes. And my guess is that that's where that spice book is. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's other weird considerations like how you're cooking something. And so the fermentation number isn't really in cooking because you're not cooking something, you're fermenting. So that's, even though they're recipes for fermented foods, I believe they have a slightly different number. I say this because believe it or not, I don't have everything memorized um and i didn't know when i would finally do this but today's the day this is volume three of the dewey decimal like handbook there's four of these and this is how how you they they all just teach you how to assign numbers every page is just like a different set of of numbers uh and what adding this one means what adding this one means so that's why i don't have it all memorized um but yeah there's four volumes of that and that's that's how the number shows up that's how we build it and assign it. So um, I don't know all the cooking ones because there's just there's, there's so too many, many very there, there are lots of like very specific numbers in there, like cooking with using a special utensil or device. Like so they're like 
this one is cooking meals in a mug. So that one is is very specialized. Like this isn't just because it's like, in the microwave. It has um, yeah. So you know, it's yeah. it, it's at a very specialized location. Yes, because and, that mug um, book doesn't do you any good if you don't have a microwave. And so you don't right, want right. to like. So you have to do a microwave number. Same with the instant pot cookbook. We have. I'm not gonna. It's fine. We have a lot of instant pot cookbooks. And uh, I'm glad that we do because so many people have instant pots. But therefore, while I was getting kind of tired of cataloging every variation of instant pot cookbook, because then there's and instant pot keto, instant and... pot paleo, instant pot gluten free, instant pot this. And so then you have to make a decision do I put it with the instant pot number or do I put it with the gluten free number? Because, and the thing is, is, if you don't have an instant pot, you can't make those recipes. So that tends to be an overriding factor. But if you have a dietary restriction, that's also an overriding factor. So it's just, this is my morning. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then, like a lot of the cookbooks are just fun cookbooks too. There, there's lots of like, you know, cooking by region or cooking by um, like, you know, meat or vegetables or you know. So they're broken up. Some of them are broken up that way too. It's just it's really interesting when you get in there. And then there are just certain numbers that like, you know, like. Um, 641.86. What's that one, Allison? That's baking. Yes, it is. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but there, and you're like, ooh, goodies. <laughs> you, know, mm -hmm. you know, you get in there. So, um, so yeah, yeah. You get you get lots of those ones too. When I was in there, I saw this uh hot chicken cookbook right before the world fell apart. I had gone to Nashville, which is like the home of hot chicken. So it was really interesting to go through here and like you're, there are some pictures of Nashville in there and like everywhere you went, they're like, oh, have you tried hot chicken yet? When they found out it was your first time in Nashville. So this was like, oh, I remember that. That was before the yeah. world apart. And it probably feels like eons ago when you were in Nashville. But I remember when you were in Nashville because it really was right before the pandemic kind of unleashed yeah. itself. And uh, you were like, oh, I was just in Nashville with all these people. <laughs> Yes, I actually like would watch the news in the morning and hear about the COVID. And then I was in a, one of the conferences and this woman like in the row behind me kept coughing and I like kept giving her dirty looks. And I think I cough shamed her and she ended up getting it up and leaving the session. <laughs> so I apologize to you coughing woman. I did not mean to cough shame you. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a very uneasy time. Yes. Um, yes. And we also talk about, I know you have this one. And it's my favorite, so I'm going to force us to talk about it. Can we talk about Binging with Babish? All right, I love this book. Well, the copy at Northwest is checked out and not by me. So um, I had to have Leah bring it. But I love this book because Binging with Babish, the guy who's not whose name is not Babish, he has a YouTube channel and he um, shows you how to make these recipes, but he also has a cookbook. And he makes and recreates recipes from movies and TV shows, like iconic foods from them, crazy foods from them, things that just look really good. And how would you ever make that? And this book is really, really cool. And it's also just fun to think about like what scenes in movies and TV shows like stick with you, what food scenes that you just like would love. Like the Michael Scott pretzel where he wants all the sweet stuff on his pretzel. They made a pretzel with all the sweet stuff. <laughs> you I know? Know the author says this really isn't that good, but for the, you know, the, the, the thing that we're doing here, you know, we'll do it, but it's uh, probably would be better with just like a few of these. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just, you go through and you're like, Oh, the, the, the moist sandwich the from moist the maker friends. from friends. Yeah. That, the that's the one I've made. Um, I've made that a couple years with, uh, holiday turkey uh, leftovers and stuff. And it it is it is very moist and delicious and a very gigantic sandwich. And there's the Simpsons one. Do you have that one handy? There's the waffle. Oh. It's like Homer's Cosmic Waffles or something. And the, yeah. the guy who made the book ruined several waffle irons trying to make it because they just he kept... He ruined three waffle irons trying to make it. Kelsey like, says the book cookbook is fantastic. I'm going to get up. I One second. Yes, he makes Homer Simpson's waffles, but he says that the recipe really is not the greatest, and he ruined um, three waffle makers. <laughs> and the guy at the hardware store where he was buying them was very confused why he kept coming in and buying more waffle makers. 
This is the Bob's Burgers cookbook. It's a very similar situation. You, It's real recipes for the joke burgers that are on Bob's Burgers. And I just, I happen to own this book. So, um, um, but I really like that Binging with Babish because it does make me think back about different things that I've watched. And this is really, this is going to be weird. Um, but I think that the the food or, or the movie or TV show food that sticks with me is actually, and that I would always love to try and it's going to be impossible, but is cartoon pizza <laughs> because I love pizza and in cartoons, it's always like very cheesy. There's like the, the smell, the heat mm -hmm. wafting off of it. And you can usually, they usually draw little spices on it. And I would just love to know it's, it originated with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because they would eat pizza and I would watch them eat pizza on that cartoon. And I'd be like, mm, I wonder what that pizza tastes like. And so that's, I think my top, my top like movie or TV show food is like cartoon pizza because I just feel like it would be the best pizza in the world. Talking about movie or TV show pizza, I saw this cookbook. Um, it's the Sweet Magnolias cookbook by Cheryl Woods. She okay. wrote the Magnolia books, which Netflix has just turned into a series. So you can watch watch the show on Netflix, eat the food from the books, and read the books on Hoopla. Tie it all together. But yeah, That's so amazing. This, this this was just turned into a series on Netflix, and Hoopla's got all the books. You can go there and read them, and you can check out this book and cook the delicious, delicious food. That's wonderful. That would be a great project for someone. That'd be a great project for you. There's actually, there's no, there's no print, original print book involved with this, but um, Gilmore Girls is a similar situation because there's an Eat Like a Gilmore cookbook. I think there's actually two of them because on Gilmore Gr Girls, they're also, there's not, there, there's definitely a lot of food in that show, but they also do a lot of like, on the go cooking like pop tarts and then there's all the coffee stuff at luke's and everything and so there's these eat like a gilmore cookbooks and so you could watch the show um and you know make some of the things from it gilmore girls also has like a reading list like every book they ever like mentioned they in the series, which yes. is like a million books ever there's a gilmore's reading list as well as a yes. gilmore watching list like every show yes. or every movie they talk about like they have gone way overboard not overboard but they've gone like in depth with the gilmore girls to, to put that together yes. i know and gilmore girls is one of the things that um the you know the most recent season was made only for netflix but it is one of the shows that did get released on dvd so that like final new season is available on dvd from the library unfortunately with the way that streaming services work hulu uh and netflix primarily um, they don't release a lot of their shows on DVD because they lose, then you lose the incentive of subscribing for their service is my impression of why they don't do that. Um, but some things they do. Handmaid's Tale is put on DVD. Stranger Things is put on DVD exclusively through Target though. So I walk over to Target and get it. Um, and Gilmore Girls, there's a few things, but just when you see a really popular show and you're like, oh, I want to get that from the library, but if it's on a streaming service originally, there is a fair chance that it doesn't come out on DVD. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we talked about watching movies and recreating the foods there. I also found this cookbook in our collection. It's the Puppet Cat yeah. cookbook. So like right now, you don't want to go to your favorite restaurant and sit down and eat, but you know, if you want, um, P.F. Chang's Magnolia Beef, well, they have the recipe for it. So you don't want to go to the restaurant, but you want that dish. Um, <laughs> yes. Olive Garden, all, Olive Garden copycat recipes. Like, it's got your favorite stuff from, you know, Panda Express and Texas Roadhouse. It's got those things that you want that you don't want to go to a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Another really good project for someone to try to recreate some of their favorite restaurant food while they're at yeah. home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should, I'm willing I to taste another. <laughs> I think there's another series of books that are like that copycat recipes. And I know I have one, but I can't see it from the view that I have right now. I think there's another, like it's a there's series. Sure. It's like even more copycat recipes yeah. or, you know, yeah, I, yeah. Like, I think actually a little bit better. I'm very yeah. picky about my cookbooks. I want really pretty pictures in my cookbooks. So Fair. not that I'm going to read them, but you know, I'll, I'll flip through and be like, make that for me. 
Well, it's fun to look at the pictures, whether or not you end up making them. It's definitely fun to look. And I know that whether or not I love, I, that's why I check them out and take them home. They sit here and I just flip through them and I read about some of the recipes and I look at the pictures and then I return them. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but any kind of cookbook you're looking for, we have it like cooking with kids or cooking for kids and like we even have a cookbook that's more like packing school lunches. Like we've got all of that and meal prep. Yes. Everything yes. you can do, we have a cookbook on it. <laughs> yeah, and there's different numbers for that. There's like time-saving cooking, which is usually where meal prep goes because the point is you're trying to do it all at once and not throughout the week. And then there's also like cooking specific meals though. And so like lunch, packing lunches is probably in the lunch number. Um, and then we do have books that are like dinners, you know, they, they said, this is a book of dinners. And so then that would go in that dinner number. But um, I always like the the subject heading quick and easy cooking because isn't that what I everybody thought. always want? Yep. <laughs> Like 641.555. Yep. yep, and that's just, isn't that what we all want? Yeah, quick and easy. That That's it. And uh, I was very surprised at, like, I think I've got three books on butter, like, cooking with butter. <laughs> it's just like, I'm, and the same thing with bacon. There We have at least three bacon cookbooks. And since I buy most of these cookbooks and I order the cookbooks, even though I hate cooking, you can see where, where I go. I'm like, ooh, butter. butter's good. Bacon, bacon's really good. <laughs> cookies, we have a ton of cookie cookbooks. Well, those, are, those, are those are usually have really good pictures too. Baking cookbooks Baking. usually have good yeah. pictures. Oh, phenomenal. And just, and we have like oh, two shelves worth of like, Christmas cooking cookbooks, like so, and cooking for special occasion. Yes. <laughs> so, anything you want, we got it. And we are at time, I think. Honestly, Ready? I don't want to keep everyone here for way too long. Okay. But I guess we can go then. I guess but, so. and and I question. I kind of see what you mean because now I'm just sort of like hungry and dissatisfied with what I was going to eat. <laughs> what I tell you. Exactly. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> right. Hopefully, we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll, have, you'll have a very good lunch today. <laughs> I hope so too. I might have to pick something up on my way in, you know, to satisfy because I don't think the leftover, leftover, leftovers that I have available to me sound good anymore. <laughs> Probably not. Well, thanks for hanging out and um, we listen to us talk all day. We could do that. Oh man, we we could do that. That's the problem. That was actually one of the things. One of the things we were concerned about um, is that sometimes we might just not. We might not be able and to we, stop. And we have days where we do talk all day. Like we'll, we'll call it just off and on, questions, like six, seven times in one day. So, but because we yeah, I think like things happen. Yeah, we will let you go for now. Um, but until well, next week, and please make it an hour long show. I mean, <laughs> give, give, give the talk show hosts a run for their money. <laughs> make make this right, one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we will leave anything in the comments if you have any more suggestions about further topics, because we pulled this one from the comments. There was a request for what about cookbooks? And so, as you can see, that was plenty to talk about. And we, yeah, so if you have any more ideas, leave them in the comments, and we'll see yep. you next week, next Friday at 10.30. Right. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye.